All right, good morning again, teenagers. It is time for Sunday School. So like we do every week, I wanna encourage you to grab a piece of paper and uh, a pencil or a pen, and uh, of course, grab your Bible, okay? Yeah, I hope you'll follow along this morning. We're gonna continue through our studies in Proverbs, and uh, we're gonna look at the word curse this morning. The word curse uh, will be our topic of study this morning. So uh, grab your Bibles, and uh, while you do that, I wanna remind you that as we do every week, if you will uh, take notes during the Sunday School lesson, send those to me, then I will uh, drop a gift off for you. Uh, and uh, it's just my way of saying thank you for paying attention, but also want to reward you for paying attention as well. So uh, if you will do that, send the pictures of your notes to me at 402-904-1300, okay? Uh, or you can, t you can send them to me on Messenger. So pen, paper, Bible, that's what you need. Let's get started. Let's pray and uh, we'll get rolling here this morning, okay? Heavenly Father, we're very thankful for the opportunity to meet around your word. And uh, Lord, for those who watch, I, I am very grateful that they do so. I pray, God, that the truth of your word would be a help and a blessing to them. And uh, Lord, be with us now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, I hope you got your Bibles out. We're going to start in Deuteronomy. I know this is a topic study of Proverbs, uh, but I feel like this is important uh, that we understand what's written here by God in Deuteronomy chapter number 11, okay? And uh, so we're going to move right along here. Deuteronomy chapter number 11, and we're going to look at verse number 26 through 28. And I uh, hope you have your Bible. The Bible says this, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a, here's our word, curse, okay? Uh, and then the Bible says this, A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a, here's our word again, curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Okay, so in this particular uh, passage, God gave a blessing and a curse. Obedience was the key to having blessings, and disobedience was the key to getting a curse. Okay, so as we understand that, I want us to keep that in mind as we look at what else God's word says in the book of Proverbs concerning this thing of a curse. All right, God does not hold man responsible uh, for everything that someone else does, but God does hold us responsible for our actions and for our sins, okay? Not all affliction or curses come because of sin, but oftentimes they do, all right? I'll give you an example. Uh, Job in the Bible was an example of a man who had done nothing wrong, but he had an affliction, or some might say that he was cursed, right? But he had done nothing wrong. But there are others who say maybe uh, somebody has to live with the uh, guilt or the curse of maybe uh, killing somebody because they were dri driving drunk, okay? Their sin caused the curse upon them, okay? So there is a difference there. Not everything that comes uh, that's bad or affliction or a curse comes because of sin, but oftentimes that is true, all right? Now, the curse may come from God. As we look in the book of Proverbs here just in a moment, the curse may come from God, or the curse may come from man, but either way, uh, they are both a result of our own actions, okay? So, the word curse means this, to utter a wish of evil against someone, to call for mischief or injury to fall upon someone, or the, the definition is this, to puncture or strike through with words and at times with violence, Okay, so let's hop right into it. Proverbs chapter number three is where we're going to start. So you grab your Bible there. Proverbs chapter number three. And uh, we're going to look at verse number 33. Proverbs chapter number three, verse number 33. I think I only have like four or five verses here, so it'll be really easy for you to follow along. Just grab your Bible. Proverbs chapter number three. And we're going to look at verse number 33, okay? The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. All right, again, curse, uh, evil in principle, uh, sorry, the, the word evil uh, means evil in principle or practice, deviating from the divine law, addicted to vice, sinful, immoral. This is a comprehensive word covering everything that is contrary 
to the moral law, both persons and actions, okay? Uh, the word wicked, it's, it's pretty all-encompassing. When we talk about somebody wicked, we think about the absolute worst that somebody can be, right? One should not desire to be wicked. But if you want a curse from the Lord, this is a sure and quick way to get a curse from the Lord, right? What does the Bible say again? The curse of the Lord is in the house of the who? The wicked, okay? Notice, though, the Bible says this, But he blesseth, talking about God, the Lord blesseth the habitation of the just or the righteous, okay? So uh, if you want a curse, I don't think you would want that. But if you do, the pretty sure way to be cursed by God is to be wicked. Okay, uh, so let's continue on here. Proverbs chapter number 11. Proverbs chapter number 11, verse number 26, we're going to look at. Proverbs chapter number 11, we're going to look at verse number 26. <clears throat> Proverbs eleven twenty-six. 26, the Bible says this, He that withholdeth corn, the people shall, what's our word? Curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it, okay? Uh, this particular verse is talking about a person who withholds from others what is needed for others, but not himself, okay? The man that, that this verse is talking about is not a man who needed the corn to feed himself, but someone who kept the corn and did not sell the corn just simply by, by being greedy, being selfish, okay? Uh, he is being greedy or selfish, and uh, people who need what he will not sell, they will curse him for his actions, right? Think about his, uh, his name. Think about his legacy. Think about what people will think of him now because he refused to sell the corn, because he decided to be selfish and greedy, he will get a curse from the people, all right? So this one's not from the Lord. This one is from the people. But if you will, it ruins his good name to be selfish and greedy. And because of that, the Bible does say, look at verse number 26, he that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, Okay. And uh, so his name kind of gets dr drugged through the mud, if you will, because of his own actions. Remember, we said that uh, with, uh, with all of these, the curse comes because of our own sins or actions, all right? So uh, how to get a curse? Be wicked, okay? I'm not telling you to be wicked. I'm just showing you this is how people get cursed. Be wicked. Don't want to do that, all right? Be selfish or greedy. That'll get you cursed really quick, okay? Let's look at another one. Uh, number three. To overlook or to hide sin. Look at Proverbs chapter number 24. Proverbs chapter number 24. And we're going to look at verse number 24. He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. Okay. So listen, this is a person who says that what is wrong is right. That somebody who goes and finds somebody who's wicked and says, oh no, it's fine. They can do whatever they want. It's good. It's righteous. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? Uh, they will get a curse of man, the Bible says, but nations will also hate him because of it. Listen, there is still uh, some things in this world that, that are sick. They're disgusting. They're wicked. They're evil. They're wrong. And uh, there's still people around that when somebody says, oh, no, that's fine. Nothing is wrong with that. There's still some people in this world who, who will curse. They will have a curse for somebody who's like that. Because they understand that what is what, what what we're talking about is still something that's wicked and wrong, but there's also people who are uh, doing this, who are overlooking, or they're hiding sin, or they're calling sin something other than sin, and God also gets involved. All right, Pro Isaiah chapter number five says, "Woe to them that call evil good." That was from God. All right, the people around us are not just the only ones that will get a curse from this, but God also gets involved. Uh, Proverbs 17, 15. Uh, you don't have to go there, but we are close if you want to pop over there really quick. Proverbs 17, 15. He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. So we're kind of along the same lines. God said, listen, uh, the person who says that that which, the, which is wicked is right, somebody who comes along and says, oh, that guy that he does all those wrong things, he's okay, he's good. Don't touch him. Uh, those people, God said, are abomination. That's very similar to the people that we're talking about in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 24. He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Okay? So God also gets involved here when somebody overlooks or tries to hide sin 
or call sin something other than sin, God gets involved. We need to be careful of that. All right, lastly, Proverbs chapter number 28. Proverbs chapter number 28. And uh, we're going to look at verse number 27. Proverbs 28, 27. Okay? And uh, the Bible says this, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. All right? Uh, We have a responsibility to help those in need. Okay? And I want to be very clear about this. We do have a responsibility to help those in need when we are able to. Okay? Listen, I want to be very clear about this. I also have my own family. Okay? So God wants me to take care of my family. That is true. But then after I take care of my family, if I have the ability to help somebody else, then God wants me to do that. I have that responsibility. But what this verse is talking about is somebody uh, who has the ability to help somebody else, but they intentionally ignore them. They intentionally ignore those who are truly and actually in need. And they turn their eyes away from them or they they uh, turn away and ignore them in such a sense to say that their needs are not valid or that uh, they're not worthy of our time or not worthy of our attention or not worthy of our help. God says that person will have many a curse. We have a responsibility if we are able to help somebody that we do. We should not ignore those who are in need. Our name, again, just as we talked about before, that selfish and greedy person, these, kind of, these two kind of line up very well. Again, what happens is our name is drugged through the mud, if you will, and our our testimony, our legacy, what is known about us, uh, it is changed and it becomes a curse because then when somebody says, oh, hey, I know that guy, he won't won't give anything to the poor. He's got way more than he needs, but he won't help them. We don't want that. That's that's what the Bible's talking about there. So, four ways to get a curse. Be wicked. Of course, you get a curse from God. Be selfish or greedy. You get a curse from the people. All right. Overlook or hide sin. You get double on this one because you'll get a curse from man, but also the Bible teaches that God gets involved with those kind of people because it's an abomination. God said, woe unto them that call evil good. And lastly, purposely ignore the poor. Don't ignore those who are in need. If you're able to help somebody, you ought to. Curses come both from man and from God. The simplest way to avoid a curse from either is to follow God's words. Okay, The Bible teaches us, uh, I showed you there in Deuteronomy, that God teaches that there was a blessing for those who obey and a curse for those who disobey, if we're just going to simplify it. And so if we'll spend time in God's Word, and we'll spend time understanding what God's Word says, and we spend time obeying God's Word, then we'll get a blessing. But on the opposite side of that, If we spend time disobeying God's word, we will get a curse from God. We should follow God's commands at every point in life to avoid a curse from God. The Bible also commands us to live peaceably with all men as much as possible. This will help us to avoid the curse of men. All right? Obey God's word. That's that's quite simply how we avoid a curse from God. Live peaceably with all men. That's how we help to avoid the curse from men. Four things. If you want to curse, be wicked. If you want to curse, be greedy. If you want to curse, hide sin. Call it something else. If you want to curse, then uh, you need to ignore the poor. None of those things are good. And a, a curse is certainly not good either. So God wants us to do the opposite. If we want a blessing, then listen, you need to understand that you need to do what's right. Don't be wicked. Be righteous. All right? Let's put it in perspective. All right? If... Uh, If being wicked brings a curse, then being righteous brings a blessing, okay? If being selfish and being greedy brings a curse, then being selfless brings a blessing. If uh, uh, the next one there is uh, if if hiding sin or calling sin something different, it brings a curse, then listen, we ought to recognize what sin is and we ought to be careful not to do it. The last one is if, if we ignore the poor and that brings a curse, then we ought to be careful that we don't ignore the poor and we... Help those who are truly in need when we're able to, and that brings a blessing. All these things just simply come from God's Word. If we want a blessing, Deuteronomy chapter number 11, verse number 26 through 28, read it for yourself. If we want a blessing, we need to obey God's Word. But if we want a curse, we need to disobey God's Word. Teenagers, I hope you paid attention. This is very important. If you want a blessing in your life, if you want your direction in life to be blessed, if you want to be a blessed person, 
in your life, in every aspect, then you need to decide that you're going to obey God's word. And better yet, if you want a blessing from men, you don't want a curse from men, then you need to try to live peaceably with all men, according to the Bible. There's a lot of people in schools, and uh, of course nobody's in school right now, but in their relationships who it, it sometimes seems like they're looking for a fight, and they're looking for the next problem to come up just so they can get into a, a, a fight or an argument or, or some kind of discord with one another. And it causes a curse to come upon us from other men. What we need to do is do what God's Word says. Just obey God's Word. And let's try to live peaceably with all men. There's no reason to get into those kind of things. We're supposed to show people God's love and grace and mercy. And that helps us to live peaceably with all men. This is how we avoid a curse. Obey God's Word. Live peaceably with all men. I gave you the four things to, to uh, get a curse. Of course, we don't want that. But those four things on the opposite side of those things can bring us a blessing. So I hope you paid attention there. Uh, Don't forget to send me your notes. Teenagers, we miss you. We miss having you at church. Uh, We do pray for you. And uh, if there's anything at all that you need, we we are here for you. And uh, we certainly uh, look forward to the time when we can gather in Sunday school once again. So I hope you're reading your Bible. I hope that all is well with you, that you're healthy, that your family is healthy. And uh, again, if you need anything at all, you let me or my wife know. We would love to be there for you. Let's pray and we're going to dismiss, okay? Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the time to uh, just gather around your word in these uh, few verses of Proverbs, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd simply help us with this. Help us to obey your word. And God, help us to live peaceably with all men. God, if we could do these two things, I believe that we can avoid a curse from God and we can avoid a curse from men. I pray, Lord God, that you help us with these things. Help us have a wonderful week, Lord. Help us to glorify you and to grow in our love for you this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, teenagers, hey, have a great week. And uh, I hope that things are well with you.